a lot of my faith dependence. We're gonna do a real quick flyby of organic functional groups. I've done a video before on organic functional groups, but I decided to do this one. It's gonna be real quick. So let's go through all the possibilities. Starting with slide kind of structure which is an L game. It's just single bonds between our carbons. And so of course each of these carbons will draw in. As an example, they have single bonds to other things such as hydrogens or other carbons. has a double bond. And since it's got a double bond between the carbons, that means it can only have two single bonds in order for the carbon to maintain its octet. Alright, then we have an alkyl. Alkyl has a triple bond. And once again, to maintain the octet, you can only have single bonds to those carbons. All right, next up, let's start including what we call heteroatoms, those atoms that are other than carbon. We'll start with the alcohol group. Okay, so this is where bonded to a carbon. There's an implied single bond here that is often left out. The lone pairs and oxygen are also commonly left off in uh, many organic structures. But do recall that there are two lone pairs on that oxygen so that it has its octet. Okay, what else do we have? How about the I like to call an oxygen sandwich because it is oxygen that is bonded to a carbon on one side and a carbon on the other side. Again, we could include those lone pairs if we wanted to really show that the oxygen had its octet. But often in organic chemistry, it's left off. Okay, next up, let's talk about halo alkanes. So, halo, this implies it is a halide. So, it could be fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. So, I'm going to do an example here where I'll have a carbon bonded to chlorine. Okay. So, for example, if these were all hydrogens, this would be chloromethane. And by the way, oftentimes generically, these are referred to as X, shortened, just a generic way of showing that it's a halide. Okay, how about amine? So, in some places, people pronounce it amine. Where I'm from, we say amine. And sometimes even within the same country, some people will say amine, and some people will say amine. In any case, the structure itself, we will always see something like this, where you've got a carbon that is bonded. 
bonded to nitrogen. It's got its own pair. I'm gonna put it there because I'm feeling like it. <laughs> and I'm gonna put our groups of majors this into my big area where an R group can be hydrogen or it can be another carbon group. So an amine does not need to be NH2, although that is the most common type we see. Okay. And just as a reminder, this carbon will be bonded to another thing, sorry. Okay, how about aldehyde? Alright, an aldehyde. This is where It is also bonded to hydrogen. Over here on the side, it's bonded to carbon, it's bonded to other things. Over here, generically, you can, we could also put our group here as a shorthand, kind of generic placeholder. But the focus here is this is at the end. to a keto. A keto is again this kind of like sandwich, as I call it, where you've got seaweed bonded over. And on both sides is bonded to carbon. Okay. Which can then be bonded to other just leaving those blank. Kind of like an R group. Okay, but this cannot be hydrogen, nor can this. Because otherwise it would be an aldehyde. Okay, so here's our keto. Alright. Next, let's look at carboxylic acid. Okay. you might think, hey, there's our alcohol number. But when these are next to each other, it has a very special chemistry as reactivity that is distinct from what you see with the keto or what you would see if you were just an alcohol. Because of that reactivity with oxygen, it gets pulling electron density away. Something called the inductive effect. It weakens this bond and it makes this hydrogen what we call acidic, right? That oxygen-hydrogen bond breaks much more easily than, for example, carbon-hydrogen bond if we had hydrogen here. It's a much stronger bond than in carboxylic acid group. So that's why it's called an acid, because this is an acidic hydrogen. It is released fairly easily. Let's look at next an ester. An ester. Once again, we are seeing a combination of functional groups we have seen before. Okay, so we have C double bondo. We've seen that before. And then we've also seen the case where we have this oxygen sandwich, right, that we saw with the ether earlier. But now we have them next to each other. We've got C double bond O, and we've got this single bond of oxygen, which is bonded to a carbon. Okay. Again, I'm just 
going to remind you this oxygen does have two numbers on it. Okay, there's our ester right there. And finally, we're going to wrap it up with an amide. Again, pronunciation. Some people call this amide. Where I come from, I learned it as amide. So, just depends on where you've learned it, and either one is fine. Okay, so now we've got carbon. We've got C double bond O again. And it shows what the bond doesn't have to. Then we have this bond to nitrogen. And the nitrogen, again, what we have here is the R groups here. They could be carbons or hydrogen. So this is an amine group. Okay, next to C double bond O, all together. This is a functional group, and they're next to each other. Called the amide or amide. Okay. So that's a wrap. These are all the functional groups that I wanted to cover. Very quickly, a little summary. I hope this was helpful for you. Please do let me know what else could be helpful. I love taking your class. That's what I'm here for. And I'm wishing all of you the best on your learning and your homework assignments and your studying for exams and everything that you're doing. You're going to do to feel free to reach out, let me know what you need, and I'll see if I can help you. I will always try. Okay, I'll see you again.